Hello and welcome to the Dream Team Professor podcast. My name is Scott and in this episode we're going to look at all the top point scorers and key talking points on Sun Dream Team for game week six so far. Now we're going to start off with Arsenal versus Spurs which finished 2-2 in the North London derby. Uh, Bukayo Saka grabbed the goal from the penalty spot and an assist for what was a Romero own goal. Um, and then Son Heung Min got two goals in this game, both assisted by Madison. Um, I thought both of them players were brilliant actually in this game. Um, Saka probably probably motivated Madison a bit too much with his uh, double celebration of stealing Madison's dart celebration. Um, but overall, I do think it was a fair result. So Saka getting those goals and assists in this game. He's now on four goals and four assists for the season. Um, he did limp off at the end, but I haven't seen anything to say that or suggest that it was a serious one. Um, but someone that did go off injured was Declan Rice at half time. Um, and now Arsenal's injury problems are really mounting. We've got Martinelli out. Trossard was a surprise um, exclusion from the squad through injury. Obviously, Timber now as well. Party and now Rice. So it's not looking good on the injury front for Arsenal, in which it looked like quite a deep squad going into the season. Um, We had Gabriel Jesus started on the left-hand side, which was strange um, in the absence of Martinelli and Trossard. I kind of thought that Nelson probably would have just played in that position. Um, And Eddie Nketiah played through the middle and was pretty poor in this game. Um, Saka on the right. Um, Son's brace takes him up to five goals and no assists for the season. And Madison's now on two goals and four assists. So... I did question whether or not Son and uh, Madison would be able to keep it up in these big games, but they've done against Arsenal and they have Liverpool next, so maybe they can do it there as well. Um, Johnson, um, the new signing for Spurs, he went off injured in the 63rd minute, but overall I think, I think the Spurs were pretty impressive, um, and I think they struggled a little bit in the first half early on, but they really grew into the game and looked quite good towards the end, so... Yeah, I think a draw was a fair result. Um, I think Arsenal did lack a bit of end product. Like I said, Eddie Nketiah did have a pretty poor game. Um, and I would like to see Gabriel Jesus up front. And Kai Havertz, again, you can't really not mention him. He came on at half time, But again, I think that's the difference really between these two teams is that Spurs have gone out and signed Madison as their marquee signing. And he really has delivered across the whole season. And we went out and signed Havertz. And he's just made the bench for what is probably our biggest game of the season so far. So, yeah, a little bit disappointing. And Spurs have done really well to get hold of Madison, to be honest. And now that makes um, the top three scoring players in Dream Team. You've got Haaland first, you've got Saka second, and Madison in third. So, uh, two players, both from North London teams, doing very well so far this season. We'll come on to Sheffield United nil, Newcastle 8 next. And eight different goal scorers for Newcastle. You had Longstaff. Big Dan Byrne, Sven Botman, Callum Wilson, Anthony Gordon, Almiron, Bruno Guimaraes and Alexander Isak off the bench. Um, so key talking points from this one. So Harvey Barnes did actually start the game. Anthony Gordon was on the bench. Um, but Barnes, I think, got a toe injury uh, really early on. So he went off in the 12th minute um, and was replaced by Gordon, who got a goal and an assist in this game. Um, he's doing really well, actually, so far. Um 45 points, the same as Bruno Fernandes now this season. Uh, He's got two goals and three assists for the season, but he is on that four yellow card tightrope, so there could be a suspension coming at some point. You've also got Kieran Trippier, who really did smash it in this game. Three assists, uh, finished on 17 points, and because they were 8-0 up, he managed to go off in the 70th minute, so maybe he will be okay for that Manchester City Cup game in midweek. Uh, just the one bonus point from getting three assists and a clean sheet I thought was strange. I would have probably expected more. So these bonus points are a little bit unpredictable at the minute. Um, Sven Botman, 3.9 million, grabbed a goal. Dan Byrne, 3.6 million, grabbed a goal. After, in my last episode, I probably said that I'd have ranked them Trippier, Fabian Scher for attacking returns, Botman and Byrne. But sometimes that's just how it goes. Uh, I think that was Botman's first goal for Newcastle. And Dan Burns second. So, yeah, all chipping in with these attacking returns at the minute. Uh, Bruno Gomez, he got a goal and an assist in this game. Callum Wilson at 4.2 million. It looks like um, he's going to be playing in these Premier League games with Isak playing in the midweek Champions League games with Isak being on the bench, I think, two games in a row now. But he did come off the bench in the 69th and grab a goal, got seven points, while Wilson got 12 points. Uh, five shots on target as well for Callum Wilson. So, 
they're good options, but there's just so much rotation in, in them striker spots. I think I would rather go for someone like an Alvarez still at this time. Um, and yeah, last last point, I put put it down already, but Trippier, um, probably a chance that he does play that City game after going off early. Um, might be a little bit of rotation elsewhere. I think we did have Livermento come on off the bench, so maybe he'll get a few minutes in that other game. I think both Trippier and Livermento can play either side. So yeah, bad time for Sheffield United and they face West Ham next while Newcastle face Burnley. On to Brighton 3 and Bournemouth 1. Uh, the goal scorers. Now, this is a hard one for me. I took out Matoma before this game because I thought that Matoma probably was going to be at risk of rotation. So, De zerbi has been rotating quite heavily with these European games, the Premier League games. And it's not just him rotating in the Europa League. He's rotating quite heavily in the Premier League as well. So Verbruggen was in goal, didn't play the last Premier League game or Europa League game, but then come in and played this Premier League game. Uh, Sonny March was on the bench. He played 90 minutes in Europe, but then wasn't in the squad for the Man United game before that, probably through injury. Uh, you've got Fatty and Dingra that are both getting minutes. Um, so there's a lot of rotation. And I thought, Do you know what? I'm just going to go without Matoma. I think he's probably only going to play one game a week now. Um... But at 1-0 down, they brought Matoma on at half-time and he scored in the 46th minute. So one minute after coming on and in the 77th. Uh, so yeah, I, I can't believe that one. 13 points for him. Um, Esther Pinion at the back got an assist and that was for one of the Matoma goals. I've got him. He's fairly popular. So five points for him. Uh, would be nice if they could get some clean sheets though. Even though he's quite highly owned, um, he's outside of the top 20 defenders at the minute. So it does show that these clean sheets... Uh, do add up because he's got one goal three assists which is pretty good for attacking returns but yeah still not inside the top 20 defenders at the minute um, and then just one last thing to mention really was that Welbeck, Ferguson, Jao Pedro all got minutes in this one um, so the striker spots for Brighton just seem that they're too hard to really target at the minute um, Jao Pedro though was another one that ended up scoring a couple of goals in midweek so it is just so so hard to predict these hauls for the Brighton players. Only person I'm going to mention for Bournemouth was Dominic Solanke. 3.3 uh, million. He did score off the back of a really big um, Verbruggen mistake playing out from the back um, but he's on three goals and two assists for the season. So not a bad start to the season for Solanke but not really someone that I'd be targeting. Apologies I forgot to mention um, the graphic that I've got up on screen here is the match center from ffstuff.co.uk. So don't forget to check that out on their website, ffstuff.co.uk. Uh, link in the description below. And it's really handy. Obviously, you can look at it now, but you can look at it during the game. It all updates in real time. So I think that's a really interesting thing to look at. If you're like me and you're constantly checking the scores uh, while the games are going on, ffstuff.co.uk. Uh, Liverpool versus West Ham finished 3-1 to Liverpool. Uh, the goal scorers were Salah, Nunes and Jota. And then Jared Bowen from West Ham. So Salah scored a penalty, uh, which he won himself, I think. 12 points for him. Uh, got a bonus point, two shots on target and two big chances created. Um, in terms of those big chances created, I know Nunes did score in the 60th minute. Uh, but again, I've seen Salah put so many chances on a plate for Nunes and he just keeps missing them. So really frustrating Nunes, but he is doing well so far this season. Uh, Nunes is on four goals and three assists so far. And he got a goal and an assist in midweek in Europe as well. Um, taking a penalty while Salah wasn't on the pitch. So Nunes could be someone to consider at 4.1 million. It's around the same sort of price as Alvarez. But Liverpool do look like they're going to put quite a few goals in this season. Uh, the assists for Liverpool were Virgil van Dijk and McAllister. Um, that McAllister assist to Nunes was something else a really nice assist that one um, and then the Bowen goal um, he's 4.7 million so I do think he's quite expensive to be honest um, four goals one assist but it was a really nice diving header um, he is looking really good so far this season 10 points for him I just think that 4.7 price point just seems a little bit too expensive for me and Bowen isn't playing in Europe or didn't in the last game he got a did not play so one midfielder, though, that I do really like the look of is James Ward-Prowse at 4 million. Um, he got seven points in this game, three bonus points and three tackles. So no attacking returns in this one. 
um, but he's on two goals, five assists for the season, and he's the fourth highest scoring midfielder in the game at the minute, and he played 90 minutes in this Premier League game, and 90 minutes in Europe, so he does seem like he's pretty nailed on for these minutes, and he is getting so many attacking returns so far, uh, and I mentioned it in the last slide, but West Ham do play Sheffield United next, and obviously it's no guarantee, but Trippier got three assists against Sheffield United, putting great crosses in for big centre-backs. West Ham have got big centre-backs and they've got someone that takes really good free kicks and crosses in James Ward-Prowse. So I predict that James Ward-Prowse probably will do quite well in that game against Sheffield United. Maybe unless they decide to sack their manager and get some sort of a miracle new manager bounce. But yeah, I can't see it. I think West Ham will get past Sheffield United in that next game. On to Man City, Nottingham Forest, which finished 2-0 to Man City. Uh, Phil Foden grabbed one of the goals and the other goal was Erling Haaland with assists for Kyle Walker and Matthias Nunes. Um, so Kyle Walker at 3.6 million. He got nine points in this one. I think that was his second assist of the season. I haven't wrote it down here, but um, nine points for Kyle Walker. And again, I keep mentioning it. He looks really quite attacking this season. So I'm liking him as an option. Where they've got those three centre-backs playing alongside Walker, I think it is giving him that freedom to get forward. So I'm really liking Kyle Walker. And it's someone that I'm looking to bring in my team relatively soon. Gavardio got 10 points. So he was the highest scoring defender on the team for Man City when they got this clean sheet. Um, he managed three bonus points in this game. And then Phil Foden at 4.4, someone that is in my team currently. Um, he got 12 points in this one. Um, and actually something that was quite interesting, it's only slightly, but he's got a higher ownership than Bruno Fernandes at the minute. I think it was uh, by less than a percentage, but I thought Bruno uh, Bruno Fernandes probably would have been one of the highest scoring or highest owned midfielders in the game. But Foden is above him and I think it's around 17% ownership, so fairly low. Um, Alvarez, 4.4 million he blanked in this game um, after I brought him in. Um, but I think it was quite unlucky, to be fair. Off in the 57th minute, so he didn't even get the uh, the two points for the appearance points. Uh, but he did have two shots on target. And I'm pretty sure the reason that he did just go off in this game was because Rodri got a red card. Um, after Rodri got that red card for... Oh, I'm not even sure if you can call it strangling. He put his arms around Morgan Gibbs-White's throat. Uh, but Rodri is now going to miss the next three games um, or the next three domestic games which is Newcastle in the cup Wolves in the Premier League and Arsenal in the Premier League I must admit I was quite smug that Rodri would be missing that um, match against Arsenal but actually now it looks like Arsenal probably going to be missing Declan Rice potentially so yeah don't get too smug um, Mateus Nunes though 2.8 million um can he fill in for Rodri? He got, he's got 12 bonus points so far this season. So he seems to be doing quite well for bonus. A few of them were pick up, picked up for Wolves, I think. But he got an assist in this game. Um, and then Haaland, eighth goal of the season. We don't really need to mention Haaland much. Um, we've been leaving him out of quite a few of these uh, episodes because he just is in everyone's team. He delivers most weeks and he's probably going to be people's captains most weeks as well. But eight goals so far this season. Jack Grealish off the bench, uh, 4.4 million, so he's still a little bit expensive, um, but maybe we'll see him start against Newcastle, which will probably take minutes off either Doku or Phil Foden. Uh, Phil Foden played 87 minutes in this one, while Doku played 51, so maybe Doku gets the start on the right while Grealish plays on the left, I'm just guessing, but... Um, yeah, Grealish only came on for a couple of minutes at the end, so maybe Grealish could get a start in that EFL Cup game. Uh, but that is pretty much it. Nothing really to report from the Nottingham Forest side of things. Um, Ake came on in the 57th minute as well for uh, Man City, and Calvin Phillips came on in the 51st. But other than that, I think a lot of these subs will appear in the EFL Cup. Ake, Phillips, Gomez, Rico Lewis... Maybe Scott Carson, probably Ortega, uh, Oscar Bob and Grealish. 
If you're enjoying the video so far, please do leave a like and subscribe to the channel for all the latest Sun Dream Team content. And also, don't forget to check out the Dream Team Tonic podcast. Uh, we did an episode live to our Patreon members yesterday with special guest Fergie, uh, previous winner of Sun Dream Team. So that was a really good one. Um, it's early access only to our Patreon members at the moment. And later in the week, it will be out for everyone on YouTube. So do check that one out. Link in the description below. On to Burnley, Manchester United. Obviously, things have been going really badly for Burn uh, for Manchester United so far this season. But the fixtures were looking good and I was expecting them to be able to turn it around. Um, I can't say it was massively convincing, but it was a 1-0 win against Burnley. And Bruno Fernandes, the guy I decided to stick with, um, did deliver in this game. We got 10 points and a goal. Um, and a really nice goal as well. Assisted by Johnny Evans, who was probably in a lot of the uh, pre-match jokes in everyone's WhatsApps and on Twitter. But I'll tell you what, that was some assist um, for the Bruno goal. And also, he had a goal ruled out by VAR, um, a corner put in by Region actually. Um, so, I mean, if he'd got a goal and an assist in this game, he really would be laughing. So, Johnny Evans, solid performance from him. He finished on 10 points as well. Uh, the defence, Onana had 9, Lindelof 7. Region six points. Um, he did go off with an injury. I think after they said that it was he'd been suffering with illness. So hopefully it was illness and not injury and he'll be back in because he's someone I've got in my team. And I did mention he put the corner in for an Evans goal that was disallowed. If he's 1.9 million starting in defence for Man United and taking corners, um, I think that's a really, really good price. Um, and then Dallo um, got the eight points as well in this game. Um, other people to mention, Haaland started, but only got the two points, and Marcus Rashford only got the two points as well, so a bit disappointing for those uh, two attackers, and then Amrabat came off the bench in the 89th minute, so maybe he can help shore Man United up in the next few games, and in the next few games, uh, United have six out of their next seven games at home. Um, and I think the only away game in that run is Sheffield United as well. So it does look like really, really good fixtures for Manchester United. Back on to Bruno. I mentioned he's 17% owned, so probably lost quite a few people this last weekend, losing patience with him. And he's lost 0 0.5 in value. So he's gone from 6, uh, 6 6.5 million down to 6 million, which is quite frustrating. But I guess it only matters if you sell him on at this point. So... I'm going to be sticking with him through this run of games. Just one last thing to add for Burnley as well. Um, I was expecting Burnley to do pretty well this season, but you've had both Manchester's clubs keeping clean sheets against them so far, City and United, and they've only scored more than one goal on one occasion, and that came against Spurs where they got two. Uh, they face Newcastle next in the Premier League, and obviously Newcastle have been doing pretty well defensively so far, so that could be a good game to target. Burnley versus Newcastle for clean sheets. But yeah, that's pretty much it for Man United Burnley. On to Chelsea nil, Aston Villa 1. Um, and Ollie Watkins grabbed the only goal in this game and piled on the pressure for Chelsea, who really aren't doing well so far this season. Uh, but we're mostly going to focus on Aston Villa because they've got the better looking assets on Dream Team at the minute. So Martinez in goal, uh, 3.2 million at the minute. Got eight points in this game for four saves. Um, and he started in the Europa League conference as well. So I think that he could be a really good goalkeeper target uh, to target to get these two fixtures a week. Uh, Digne and Cash are still delivering as attacking fullbacks. They've both done well in this game. Uh, Digne got nine points. Cash got nine points. Uh, Digne got a bit of a naughty tackle against him. I think Gusto was harsh to be sent off for it. Um, but he looked okay, I think, after that. Didn't go off as a as a sub or anything like that. Um, Consa, oh sorry, on Digne and Cash as well. Cash is the third highest scoring defender in the game. And Digne is the fifth highest scoring defender in the game. So two really good attacking fullbacks there for Aston Villa that are playing quite regularly. Uh, they did get rotated a little bit. Cash didn't play in midweek. But he did come on and score okay. And Aston Villa were doing pretty well. They, they had a bad start to their Euro, uh, Europa Conference campaign. So maybe they won't rotate so much. I don't think Callum Chambers really cut it at right back in that one. Uh, Consa hit three bonus points and finished on 10 points. Um, 
Ollie Watkins finally got a goal. He got one goal and he has four assists also for the season. Uh, 4.1 million though. Um, I still think I lot prefer the likes of Darwin Nunes and, and maybe Alvarez if you can stretch to him. Um, Nicholas Jackson. That, that's got to be the end for him now in people's teams. So five yellow cards now he's picked up. Um, he'll miss the next one against Fulham. And obviously Gusto picked up a red, so he'll be suspended as well. Uh, Connor Gallagher's pretty much the only person I'm going to really mention for Chelsea. So 2.9 million. Um, and he's on 11 bonus points for the season. Uh, four points behind Foden's total. And he's on more points than Diaby. Diaz and Solly March so it just goes to show some players can sort of go under the radar with this no, uh, new bonus system and like tackles things like that but it's not something I'm going to be targeting but I just thought it was a little bit fascinating and then my keeper Robert Sanchez um, managed to pull off six saves in this game so despite losing the clean sheet he still managed to finish on five points which I was pretty happy with and Ben Chilwell He's been disappointing recently, so he started on the bench, came on and grabbed his third yellow card of the season. On to Brentford Everton, I'm going to speed things up here because there's not that many people that will likely be targeting any more from these teams. Brentford were fairly popular at the beginning uh, with Umbuemo, but he's had a bit of dip in form. He got four points in this one and two points in the last game. Visser, who I had for some time, um, he got three points in this game, which was his highest score in his last five. So, again, Visser very disappointing recently. Jensen got the goal for Brentford, um, and he's actually scored three goals and got one assist so far this season. Um, he sits at three million so far. Um, James Tarkowski at 2.2 million, grabbed a goal and an assist. Always quite an attacking threat for um, Everton, but... Is he someone you're really going to want if you can get Reggie on at 1.9? Calvert-Lewin off the bench, 2.3. And Decore, oh sorry, off the bench and scored. And Decore now scored in this game and he's on two goals and one assist for the season. Crystal Palace, nil. Fulham, nil. Uh, Fulham have had three clean sheets in their last seven games. So doing quite well defensively. Leno got eight points in this one and he's done pretty well as a keeper. Uh, Castane, 2.6 million. He's on an average of seven points per game. Um, and man of the season, Eze, 3.7 million, got his six points, got his three bonus points again. Um, and the only time that he's actually scored less than three bonus points this season was when he came off the bench in that uh, Carabao Cup game and actually got two assists anyway. So, yeah, quite fascinating. Um, Eze still smashing it, whatever he does, even in a game where there's no goals. Um and if he does maintain these bonus points in this, uh, well, these next two games against Manchester United, one in the cup, one in the league, um, I think he does have to be serious consideration, really, for just stick and pick, I think. But 3.7 million, your decision to make. He's not in my team currently, but he does look really good. Um, Hughes at 1.6 million. He's also got three bonus points in back-to-back -back games, but not someone I'd consider. But for the same price, 1.6 million. Uh, Johnston, 25 points this season. He's got the most, uh, well, sorry, the same amount of points as Allison from Liverpool, Ariola from West Ham, and he's on one point less than Onana from Manchester United. So holding his own for, in terms of value and in terms of points, he's done pretty well this season. But will he play in the cup against Manchester United? Um, I think maybe they'll give this one to Henderson to play against his old club. We'll see. Then Luton versus Wolves, which finished 1-1. Morris scored from the penalty spot. Um, and obviously they've got a double game week coming up. So maybe you take a punt on him. I, I think it's more of an FPL thing that people are doing. Colton Morris uh, up top for the double game week. Not for me at the minute. But he scored a penalty in this one. And his next games are Burnley and Everton away. Uh, Cabore got an assist and Pedro Neto uh, scored in this game. So he's 3.2 million. He's got one goal, four assists so far. And he's actually the seventh highest scoring midfielder in the game. One point ahead of Bruno Fernandes and one point behind Jared Bowen. So holding his own and 13 bonus points this season, which is the same as Bukayo Saka. But Again, I don't think I'll be bringing him in. Then quickly onto my team update. So 96 points so far um, from the Premier League games. Obviously, we still do have the Carabao Cup to come. So 96 points and my total is up to 550. And I had a, 
well, sort of halved my rank from about 14k to 7.7k. So not a bad week for me so far. Sanchez got me five. Estupinion got me five. William Saliba, just the two points. Matty Cash with nine. Region with six. And the midfield three of Bruno, Saka and Foden got me 10, 16 and 12. So good points from the midfielders. And then up front, Alvarez, like I've said, I bought him in. He didn't really do anything in this one, but I think that was unlucky because of the Rodri red card. Um, Matoma, though, one of the guys that I took out, did deliver um, always the way. Salah, 12 points, and the captain, Haaland, on 16. Um, not sure how many of these will play in the Carabao Cup. Always hard to predict the Carabao Cup lineups. Um, I won't spend too much time talking about my transfer plans because I want to try and keep these episodes a little bit shorter than my top players to target episodes. Um, but I'm looking roughly at maybe bringing in Kyle Walker and Botman for Estupinian and Alvarez. Um, I kind of think I'm jumping the gun a little bit early taking Alvarez out. I've only had him for a week. Um, it, long term, I probably was going to have to take him out because I, I'm planning to play the part of the bus chip in game week nine. So I will need five defenders um, but do I have to do it now is the question. Um, I'm just getting a bit of FOMO with these Newcastle defenders. I can't get to Trippier yet without taking out Bruno, Saka or Foden, which I don't want to do, or Salah, for example. Um, so could I just get Botman in as like a little placeholder? Um, and then Kyle Walker is someone that I'm going to want in my park the bus, along with Region and Cash. So just rough ideas at this point. Um, the other option that I was thinking about before is just rolling it um i just don't want these newcastle defenders to get away from me and price me out so i was thinking if i get botman in now that could cover me just in case the prices do get away from me but at the moment i'm just going to leave it open and see how we go in the carabao cup but 96 points for the game week 550 total and up to 7.7 k overall that is everything for this episode i want to keep these match day recaps a lot shorter than the actual uh, top players to target videos and that will be dropping probably on Thursday or Friday this week uh, so thank you very much for watching uh, also do check out the latest episode of the Dream Team Tonic podcast I'll leave a link in the description below for that one if you've enjoyed it please do leave a like subscribe to the channel and I'll see you on the next one goodbye